Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today I just received these Hollybro Kakute combos here. And what these are currently, these are the Kakute F7s with the Metal 4 and one ESC. Both of them exactly the same. However, one comes with the AT Lotto V2, which some of you have seen and some of you have not. So some one combo comes with the AT Lotto V2 and the F7 here. Now the F7 is pretty interesting because this is what I will be basing my neural flight testing on. So this is why I got a couple of these because, um, I just trust the Kakutas, and they're using the full-fledged F7, thus giving me all the memory I need. Hopefully, I can fit everything inside. Also, we're going to be taking a look at the 4-in-1 Metal ESC. The testing will be up very soon. And uh, also, there's another combo here where it comes with the Kakute and the 4-in-1 Metal ESC. So, as you can tell here, they still stuck with the uh, soft-mounted gyro, but with some sort of uh, adhesive here. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the flight controller by itself and see how we were going to go about setting this up and seeing just all the options that we have. Now, currently from taking a look at it, can you see that shine right here? And if you take a closer look, you could also see a little shine on the F7 here. And I think what they've done here is they've actually conformal coded this. And uh, we'll see that right now. Yeah, they have. As you can tell, that's conformal coded right there. That's the residue from the conformal coating, which is a really nice step. If some sort of moisture were to hit it from a grass, you know you know how it is. Sometimes the grass has some moisture. This will kind of reduce the overall chance of it actually burning out or causing some sort of a short circuit, which is really nice. However, that's not the case on the metal ESC here. It does not have any conformal coating. As you can tell, it's just the uh, black PCB. You can tell by the shine on this one. Now, if you can tell here, they're using, they are using the full-fledged F7 seven um microcontroller unit which is going to be a really good thing especially for what i will be using these for i'll be setting up neuroflight which is basically if you've missed my previous video it's basically beta flight with the pit controller removed and the pit controller is basically an ai that's in charge of everything and very adaptive and it understands and it learns everything so so far i've actually trained a couple of them and i'll be showing you that uh, in an upcoming video today, actually, I've, I've, I've uh, trained a couple uh, AIs and we're actually going to see them and against the correct PID tune of that virtual quadcopter and we can kind of get an idea. Uh, we'll get into that in that video. There's more things that you might, some people were saying that, oh, it's only going to be as good as its environment. Well, that's not true. The, 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 the special thing about an AI is you can stick it, well, if, you're, if trained well, you can stick it in any environment and it's supposed to handle like a beast. That's the whole idea. And it's showing some really great results. Not the ones that I have, but the uh, official findings, which we'll talk about in the later video. So we're using the full-fledged F7 here. We do have an OSD, as you can tell right there, which is something, obviously, uh, something you want. They are using the ICM gyro, which is also, again, soft-mounted via some kind of adhesive. Now, I have used this. I haven't had any issues, but obviously, and again, this this does give it a little weak spot. So in, maybe in a hard crash or if something were to come in and hit it, that could possibly cause an issue. But I don't think a lot of people notice any issues, and um, I haven't myself. But again, um, yeah, there's just you know, it's this, these things are unpredictable. So far, these have been testing very well for me. Now, if we take a look at the connection setup between the 4-in-1 ESC, they actually do provide you with the cable needed, so it's going to be a really easy and fast installation here. And they also give us a extra adhesive and an extra um, ribbon cable for the. Uh, gyro here just in case we kind of you know screw it up or accidentally adds you know hit it with a soldering iron uh, which is something likely to happen sometimes but they have provided extras here which is really nice and you get some holly bro stickers here which is also pretty cool they also give us a sanyo 470 35 volt microfarad low esr capacitor um i haven't finished testing this ESC, but i'll come back with the testing now these two come together and we're gonna see how well they test in a later video right now this video is just about the kakute um f7 flight control there's two versions there's the old one and there's uh just the uh the normal flight controller which is this guy here and again this is an f7 so they do provide us with two wires for the esc so you're not going to be slaughtering any esc and the esc i believe also supports the ESC telemetry if i remember correctly but again we'll come back to the esc later on so they do give us two uh, wires here one for a longer wire and a shorter wire so because some people are lately are liking to put two stacks because some frames come where you can put two stacks like side by side so that's a really nice little addition they've added here and now let's take a look at the pinouts and see what uh, options they've provided us with here. All right, so let's go ahead and take a closer look here. Now, this is something what I really didn't like, but it's not really a deal breaker, which is the video signal is really close to this ribbon cable. I would have really liked to see something not so close to this, but as you can tell, I mean, they didn't have much room to do. Uh, put this anywhere else. So here we have the video input, 5 volt and ground. This would power up your camera. And if we take a look at the arrow here, 
which would be pointing forward. So this would be installed in your quadcopter like so. We have the USB on the right. Camera's really nice. I see I see what they're doing here because it'll just be a quick connection to the camera since this is the front of the board if you're gonna use the default orientation here. And let's start with the back here. So what do we have? We have ground, LED signal, and five volt. So usually the five volt and ground will be next to each other and the LED signal uh, would be just on the side. But here we have the LED and the signal in the middle, ground, five volt. And this is the buzzer minus. So if you're gonna be installing a buzzer, the ground of the buzzer would go here because this is what controls the buzzer. Here we have SDA and SCL. These are for GPS and some I2 squared uh, protocol sensors, if you might say. Here we also have a ground and we have two motor outputs here, which are motors five and six here. Okay, so that's really nice. If you're not gonna be using the inbuilt connector, you can access motors five and six if you needed them if you're building a hexacopter or something happened to one of your pinouts. Now, if we take a look at the right, the writing is pretty small. I mean, left. The writing is pretty, pretty small here. So bear with me. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we, I would actually go about setting this guy up here. All right. So the first two are ground and B plus. B plus would be the battery voltage that's coming into this here. So whatever battery voltage is powering this guy up, that's where you're going to access it. And the reason they've set that up here is because we have VO here, which is video out. Video out would be our VTX. So they're expecting you to put ground. Uh, the power of your VTX and the, the signal, the video signal of your VTX right there. And they've also provided you with an RSSI, I think. So this one here seems like it's an RSSI pad for analog RSSI if you want to do that. It's kind of a weird arrangement here. But um, yeah, they've had that set up right there. Here we have UART1, which is R1 and T1, UART2, R2 and T2. And then here we have UART3, which is RX3 and TX3. And then UART4, 5, no, this is 6 here because I think they're using five for ESC telemetry and I'll double check that in a bit. And if we take a closer look down here, what do we have? We have this one, which is not connected to anything. So yeah, this is not connected. And here we have another five volt in ground and 3.3 volt. So what they're expecting you to do with your receiver basically is if you have spectrum, you have your ground and 3.3 volt. If you have anything else like a FR Sky or iBus, you have your ground five volt, and you're going to be using one of the RX, you could use the RX6 here. So I think it'll be in default by Betaflight. Serial RX is already enabled for uh, UART6 because that's where you want to install whatever it's IBUS, SBUS, um, you know, yeah, IBUS or SBUS, that's all we're using now. You want to install that right there. Uh, it's just the best layout here because you have the 5 volt, the ground, and it's not this one here. Be careful. It's going to be this one here because this one is not connected. So I don't know why they have that set up here. They couldn't probably get a trace down to it here because this board is pretty busy here, if you can tell. All right. So back to my point about the RX telemetry, it's not on RX5. Actually, if we take a closer look here, theoretically, what they want to use is RX7. So UART7 would be the one for serial for ESC telemetry if you will be setting this guy up. So take that into consideration. Here we have our boot button in case you brick it. Uh, you can easily do that. The overall board is really nice. It's, it's a, just a beautiful F7 on there. Look how huge that thing is. It's humongous. And we do have the SD card expansion, which is a huge, huge plus here. And we also, as you can tell right there, we do have a barometer. So that's really nice as well. Here we have our 8 megahertz crystal. I think it's the crystal. It's the 8 megahertz for the flight controller here or the microcontroller unit. And um, overall, it's a really nice board. Now, and again, I'll be setting this up as my testing setup for Neuroflight. And again, if you missed this, please check the video before it. Uh, it's going to be some pretty interesting things. And uh, I'll have an update video on that coming up very soon. And uh, hopefully this thing goes absolutely great. So, yeah, I do have a couple of these. So that's going to be really nice to test and give me a nice benchmark since I do have the SD card expansion. And since I do have a super sensitive gyro. And at the same time, I do have SD card expansion, OSD, and even a barometer if I needed it for later on. If you wanted to do something a little bit different with an AI, which can do some kind of altitude hold. But that's a whole different story. Right now, we're just going to see if we can get train the AI to handle PIDs. Just absolutely beautiful. And, well, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys do like my content and would like to support me, please click the links down below before you make a purchase. That absolutely supports the channel. And I do also have a Patreon. Any support there can go an absolute long way. And, well, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.